Hey, this is George. Hey, this is Fred. This is real talk with George and Fred. What's going on, brother? Not much. Hey, look, I'm trying to throw the guns, huh? I see you trying to throw the guns. I got guns too. Oh, man. Chill, 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 chill. Easy. I'm going to hit you with that little New York. Easy, son. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, man. The guy had brought the water for the pool when I was out there, you know, as they put the water in the pool because we have a above ground and it, we, so one of those put together ones. Oh, and to make sure that the water wasn't shifting, this, that, and the third, man. We had a tornado warning over here last night, man. So it was crazy some of the things that was happening. Had water, I told y'all. Had water leaking in the basement, man. It's crazy. Hey, George, water leaking in the basement. I like some uh, hurricane energy stuff we had going over here. Oh, man. It's crazy, Fred. It's <laughs> crazy. So it's definitely all good. But that being said, listen, we got a great show today. I know we always say we got a great show, but this is a great show. We oh, have yeah. Mr. Tony Sands with us. We got to bring him into the show. What's going on? Buddy? What's up, guys? How you guys doing? Doing good, pretty good. good. Doing pretty good. good. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We definitely appreciate you being here. Thank yeah, you for having me. Yeah. Absolutely. So we got to fill a football player this time, George. Finally, somebody represent me here. Finally, somebody yes. represent football players yes. in the yes. Wait, hold on. Yes. I play. I play football too. I just didn't play that long. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I Mr. Sands, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, let me see. Where do I want to start? First of all, I'm in South Florida. I'm here from in South Florida. I uh, train athletes all over the country. I played a professional with the Arizona Cardinals. I played also at the University of Kansas, where I was set two NCAA records, 58 cash, 396 yards in one game against University of Missouri. Uh, I also was the Big Eight Player of the Year. Big Eight was the conference prior to the Big Twelve conference. Mm -hmm. the merger of the Southwest Conference and the Big Eight Conference became the Big Twelve Conference. Right. Now I own a twenty-one thousand square foot training facility here in South Florida in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, we bought our franchise from the D one franchise, so we're training athletes uh, all day. The right. NFL all the way down to the UT, they travel through the building at any point in time. Nice. Right. Nice. What was your inspiration for that training center? Because I, wait, I, I know that Florida is a football state like Texas and a few others, but um, was it a lack of that facility or was it just for us, so to speak? I mean, what was the vision behind it? Because uh -huh. I know our communities lack a lot of things. Before I answer that question, I got to go back to the, how you phrased the question. Remember, Texas and California follow behind us. We are the mecca with the country. <laughs> don't want that ever. We don't want that ever. We underestimate it. We are the mecca right. when it comes to football. Everybody right. understands that. So you say we know Florida is a football place. Yeah, we are a football state. And everybody else follow behind us. Yes, sir. We yes, sir. So yes, sir. now, with with that being said, the reason I decided on a facility, I've been in the business since 1995. I started out in the business. I started out with one overspeed van, and I used that van when I stopped uh, coaching college football. I went back home, and I wanted training athletes. My first two athletes that I ever had an opportunity to train. Uh, for the combine was Gilbert Brown, the grave digger, I played with the Packers and, and Dana Stubblefield, who was the first round draft pick by the San Francisco 49ers. That's right. That's right. I trained both of those guys and they went high. And I decided at that time I'll take uh, the skill set that I have. I'll stop co coaching college football and I'll move back home because I had two, I had two young boys and I also wanted to be a part of their life. As a young right. black man, I wanted to make sure that I still stayed a part of their life. At that time, football was, you know, from playing, being away from them, and then coaching, but you really away from them. I wanted to right. make sure that right. I still was able to raise my kids. So I moved back home and started the business. Started doing this business for free. Mm -hmm. My first two clients uh, were my two cousins that were attending St. Thomas Aquinas High School and the coach was saying, we have a hard time training them to get them motivated. I said, well, once I get back down there to start the business, all that'll be over. Right. Once I got back home in my roots, I started training for free. St. Thomas was the first program that I 
I had the opportunity to train, which I am a graduate of St. Thomas Aquinas High School. So went back and started training them, started training guys from all over. As it started progressing, uh, I, I found out then that, you know, hey, this could be a business. But it wasn't the business that you see today. Right. It, we didn't have the glitz and the glamour. We didn't have the social media to launch you out in a matter of seconds, putting a video out. You had to grind this through word of mouth. So I grinded it through word of mouth. I was, then after that, I started taking off equipment off the back of my truck. Go to the local parks and train some of the professional guys. I was one of the first guys to bring minority athletes into the inner city to let our young African-American boys and girls see these athletes train in the inner city, not just, you know, what they That's see on Sunday, right. not what they see them driving, but to let them understand that this is a business. This is their job. This is what right. they do. This is how they do it in a professional way. So I brought that to the inner city here in Deer Field and in Pompano and in the city of Fort Lauderdale. So as I progressed and I started moving, I bought me two trailers. Mm -hmm. And I started moving the trailer. We started moving around. People started requesting me to come here. People started requesting me to come there. So once I got that set, some years later, a partner of mine came up with an idea. He wanted to open up a facility. Uh, we looked at different spots that we wanted to look at. It. And, uh, you know, we, we, we sat down and negotiated what terms would be because at that time I was used to being on my own, and now mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to partner up with somebody. So there, when you get ready to do that, there's terms that's got to be met on both sides, and both sides got to be able to agree that you can agree to work in unison with each other. So that's right. that's right. once we came to that agreement, which we were supposed to open up 20, uh, uh, March of 2020, but COVID hit and it put us back, mm -hmm. put us, it set us back. To October to when it started clearing up a little bit, but we still was kind of tightening, especially with gyms. Gyms, we took it hard because they, you know, were saying uh, that gyms were one of the number one spots that that COVID, uh, you can catch COVID. So we took a, you know, all gyms took a hit on that, but we were able to come through that. Now, our doors, we can't keep them on the hinges from people opening them up, trying to get in, uh, right, trying right. to train, and that was one of the key things that I didn't have. I didn't have a facility at the time. And, right. and, even, and I was doing great without one, but I knew the final piece to the puzzle would be to get into a facility to where right. now they could come in. It's a one-stop shop. They come in, they get their meals. They come in, we have a physical therapy department. You name it. Now everything is in-house. You don't have to go outside uh, to look for anything. Everything is, is right here. At their fingertips. I mean, I mean, you name it. We do it from lacrosse to tennis, football, basketball, track and field. Uh, there's no uh, golf, tennis. We cover a whole landscape. Up. So uh, we had to, you know, that was the piece of it, and it's been beautiful, uh, a beautiful ride for me to be able to see uh, where I came from in 1990s, early 90s, to where we are now uh, in the 2000s. It's been amazing. Let me ask yeah. you about scale. Because you said October 2020 was COVID, and now you've opened up facilities and you have multiple sports. How do you scale that fast without losing something? Either losing something in scheduling, uh, scaling and getting the right staff, the trainers, the physical therapists in rotation, getting the catering to come in and things like that. Because when you grow that big, I know from just yes. other businesses, you miss a lot of different things or it happens too fast. And when it happens too fast, you forgot this because this wasn't in place. You forgot that. Oh, I forgot. See what I mean? Like, it's just so much that you become scatterbrained almost. How did, See, you, control, how did you control that? How I controlled it, I had prepared my vision and my dream. I mm -hmm. had prepared myself for this. Sometimes we just say that we are prepared for it, but once we get in the moment, we find out, okay, I'm missing here. But once you prepare, mm -hmm. had a vision, and laid out the plan that once that plan come up to you, then guess what? Yep. You are going to be ready. I have a staff of over 20. I have over 20 people. Nice. Person have their job to do. 
Right. I don't and I don't micromanage them because that's what I tell them. This is how you pay your bills. This is how you eat. We yeah. have everyone. We have two. four front desk people that handles all the kids' registration. Their schedule. We have a, a company that comes in, uh, a meal prep that comes in, plans the guys' meal. So we kind of lean that a little bit toward let them handle that part. We didn't want to control that part, but we wanted to make a percentage off that part. So that That's was right. one of the right. hands off. We also have a company that works, uh, one of the top rehab companies here uh, in South Florida. So we allow them to come in and lease a spot from us far as to do the rehab. So that way, that was another area. All we do now is train the athletes. We give them right. a right, right. house full of everything that an athlete would need, and we get the percentage. But the schedule that comes to our front desk, we have a great front desk staff, uh, uh, ladies, gentlemen, that come in and make sure that when I walk in the building, my schedule is on my desk. My other staff, I've already given them their schedules of what they got to do, what their classes are. How many classes we have? We use a system called Mind Body that breaks everything down. We have it so that way everybody on their phone knows their schedule. If things have to occur, we communicate through it through WhatsApp. If something, hey, listen, I need you to move out here. I need you to travel to this place. I need you to move. So we pretty much got everything uh, down pat, but it's coming now. And, and, and as it comes, we are understanding that, hey, we may even have to increase some of our uh, employment staff to even bring in more because the demand is is really coming. So we are preparing for that. I'm in the midst of interviewing uh, some more front desk people to come in and make sure that we have a schedule. We have certain staff that are over certain uh, sports. We have right. staff, uh, one of our front desk people, because with nothing but lacrosse. Right. That's their job, to schedule all of the lacrosse team. We have a football person that deals with all the football programs, football kids that come in. That's their schedule. Basketball. You name it, we do it. None, what we call none, you know, the Olympic sports. We have someone that deals with those, and that's when you tennis and you golf and things of that nature. So we pretty much have everybody, and we trust that everybody's going to get their job done because at the end of the day, this is how everybody eats, and this is how everybody eats. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. I have one more question for you real quick. I know you have to go. Can you tell the fans about your book? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I'll get, I'll get on that, George. I'll go get on that, George. <laughs> Trace, is, I got you. Listen, the book is excellent, hey, guys. I, I mean, when, it, when I say excellent, uh, it took me a year and a half, really, to write it. I went through phases in the book of my life, what I dealt with with sports, what I dealt with outside of sports, and how – I was able to bounce back and become uh, a strong, inspiring man that I am today uh, for, for the youth. I, I always say if you plan to develop something, you must develop it from the ground. It's like building a house. I must test the soil to make sure that right. the soil is solid to build on. Right. Then I get me a contract to lay out the plans. Once the plan is laid out, then you get the developer. We start moving forward with the developing of a successful program. And that's what I do when I when I wrote this book. I wrote the book about my mental health struggles that I was dealing with throughout playing this game and how this book will be able to help someone else. I see so many athletes, even they may have college degrees, but they're still lost out here in the world on what it takes to be successful. They were successful on the football field. But once we've taken the pigskin or the basketball away from them, they're lost in this world because they've never had to navigate through this system. Right. And there are key components within my book that gives them an opportunity to see what it takes to be able to raise yourself to a certain level, fall back down, and develop and get back up. I always say a man is judged by distance travel. And I've traveled a long distance to get to the point to where I am. Uh, and, you know, listen. I want to make sure that I'm always uh, an inspiration to men and young girls and young boys that I come across because if I if we plant the seed when they're younger and we plant it and we water it, fertilize it, guess what? That seed will be great once it becomes. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, 15, 15 minutes, so I got one yeah. little question for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I know we talked talk about 
height issues. Like, you know, yes. like yeah. how you do some of the players coming out who did with the exact same issue? Because I know me, I had a skill, had a physique and everything, but like the, fa- the facade of the NFL is you have to be 6'4", 6'5", yeah. play certain position. So how in your facility, how do you get your kids to understand that even though that is criteria, but they still overcome that? Like what's some of the things you use to help them well, overcome that? The first thing I we do here, we we, we we got to build out the kids that we see that come in like that. They always have, there's always signs. When you see a kid that come in and his head's down, that means self-esteem is low. So the first thing before we even get into the training aspect of it, we got to get into the self-esteem building of it and to let it right. understand. Once we build this self-esteem, he can overcome those obstacles. Because I let him right. see, hey, I'm living proof that if you grind and you work hard, you put everything into what you are doing. You will reap the benefits. You will reap the benefits of success, but you got to work hard at what you're trying to get accomplished. You can't be sleeping when your opponents are working. You got to be working when they're working. When they're sleeping, you got to be working. So you outwork them every time. And also, uh, take it back to my children. I asked them this question. I said, I know over the years you guys have heard that practice makes perfect. No, practice does not make perfect people. Exactly. Practice does not make perfect because you can practice something wrong. the wrong right. way. The only thing you're doing is practicing the wrong habit. I tell them there's five P's to success. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. That's right. Those are the five P's to success. And we make sure our kids memorize that and break that down in every step. They go home, come back, do the homework, and listen. We have them. And at that point, you got them. You can you got them because you're letting them understand that's just not what you're gonna see on the football. It's what you gotta put into yourself mentally as well as physically to be successful. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, coach, listen, I appreciate it. Let everybody know where they can find your book and where they can they find you on social media. Yeah, you can find me on uh, my book is on Amazon. Uh, you just go to Amazon search. Uh, you can search Tony Sands book and it'll come up. Uh, book title is always before my time. That means guess what? Uh, if I was playing in this day and age with the things yeah. that I accomplished, I would have been a first round draft pick. But that's right. as my sister told me, it's not that you wasn't before your time. You were right on time. That's when right. she said that, to me, it made me think about my book and say, guess what? I was right on time on the edge of this mental health situation that we're dealing with here in America that we were scared to talk about. But now, we are open to talk about it. So I am glad that I am on time, but I wrote my book. I was before my time because guess what? I was small. It wasn't acceptable to have a guy that was five, six, uh, playing running back in the NFL back in the 90s. Now it is. And I'm glad that I was able to pave the way for several guys that I train also that are small guys. That are- so, I, I, I mean, I, I love it. Or they can contact me on my social media, uh, Instagram at Get Sensational. That's like my name. My last name is Get G E T S A N D S A T I O N A L. Or you can go on my Twitter page, my Twitter feed at, at twenty four at Tony Sands twenty four, or my Facebook at Get Sensation. Nice, Coach. And we appreciate you. Go ahead, my, favorite, my favorite speech. Break to the family, brother. Hey, we here we go. You. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. I, I, okay. I, Listen, I love it. I got kids out there waiting on me. One of my guys coaches got a little deal, so I had to come in and substitute. That's what players do for each other. But we have our guys back. We got okay. your back. We got your back, coach. We definitely All right. Have Thank you. Have Thank a you. great weekend. Bye. You too. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Man, it was a banger. Well, I told you. We went out muscle shorts and everything, ready to go. We come with. Oh. You said we now. <laughs> you said we wearing our muscle shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's definitely all good, man. You know, the thing I like about that was the five Ps. You know, because oh, I yeah. have something like that too. It's not practice that makes perfect. It's perfect practice that makes perfect. You know, because when it deals to certain things, you know, we get these things in our minds, but it's the decondition deconditioning of that. People don't understand. Once you learn something. You have to learn. You have to do it ten thousand times right because, okay, break it down. In order to learn and understand something, you have to do one one thing a thousand times. That's where you get the muscle memory to do it. 
Those are not my number. That's the U.S. Olympic Committee numbers down in Colorado. But when you have a bad habit, you have to do the correct thing right 10,000 times correctly to erase that bad habit. So if you exactly. learn something wrong, you have to do it 10,000 times right in order to erase that bad habit. You see what I mean? And so exactly. you always have to be particular when it comes to that. And, you know, it's just great hearing that message always reinforced by coaches in the industry and everything. You know, and phrase, look, I do have to apologize. You know, every time I say, you know, Texas is a football state, I forget to say Florida was the exactly. first football state. <laughs> exactly. We can, you got to think, Florida, like the more all conditioned sport, can we cover every single weather condition you can think of, except right. for snow. So everything, yeah, everything but except for snow. So our players are perform in heat a lot better than someone from Colorado, someone from California, someone from Upper State, New York, so whatever. Because the fact about it is, once it transitions to the heat, it's not the same thing as heat in New York, heat in Jersey, heat in Texas. Not the same thing, you know. Now California heat, that very similar Florida heat. So you might get cooked over there, but we why we adapt quicker. And another thing, too, I tell you, my player, I used to tell my player, too. That was a perfection. I hated practice. We might hate it practice well because we did the same thing over. And a lot of times it wasn't a great technique. It wasn't a great skill set because the guy didn't know how we were talking about because we kept getting hurt. And so when I went to coaching, I said, you know what? Let me teach the fundamentals before I start teaching anything else. Before I did any plays, before I did anything else. And I noticed some coaches with the bad, like I said, bad habits. Why some people you see in the NFL – People still tackle with their heads because right. that's a habit that never broke, even in college. Because some people don't have time to break the habit. Like you said, Joy, take 10,000 time to recorrect a bad habit that's versus right. that thousand time or correct habits. So what I try to do is teach the kid young how to properly tackle, how to properly do things properly young. You know, and I tell them one time, game time is not the same as practice. That's right. In practice, you can do everything a thousand times. I mean, in practice, I would not allow to hit. Because I went out of hit because my scan down is not harder than some people's arm. Right. Well, that's my problem also, too, because if you tell a player to scale down, who knows how mentally that affects him when he gets into the game? That's right. It's not a player gets to the game and hits soft. Now you're yelling at the player saying he's not hitting hard enough. But you just told the player in practice to hit soft. Right. You, know you, you confuse his players. I tell the player, look, that's your teammate. We don't hit teammates that hard. Right. Now, opposite of that is different story. So I do it. I use what I call a dummy pass theory. If you're not a dummy, that's not a team, that's you the teammate. So dummies are not teammates. So you kill dummies, right. not teammates. That's so right. what I do is that's how I scale levels. So say for instance, we're in a game and we playing normal football. And the other side side they want to play dirty football. I said, dummy time. They're about there. Ooh, cold dummy time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, what the heck is dummy time? Now, when he started getting a player, started getting hit, he know what dummy time means. He right. Dummy time, you had no restriction on hitting. You level him. So now imagine somebody with technique and actually tackling somebody properly, hitting somebody. That's right. That's a big difference versus somebody who's bad tackling and you can bounce off. Because I always talk, you ever heard of WWW? Oh, yeah. I tell you, wrap up like WW. You grab him and lift and thrust. That's so right. like a bull. What a bull does. He hits you, takes you, and he drives you to the ground and stop over you. Keep going. Same technique. No difference is you just lay there with him and you make him not they fumble. Cause I learned uh like one number one injury I learned too, that I had myself too. Mm -hmm. That did you know that when you're making a tackle, they always told us either take take either square up, right? Or aim for the center of the chest. That's right. Now, here's the thing, if I tell you, if a guy at 300, 400 pounds playing running back, one at five, one at four, four, and you only a buck 25, would that technique work for you? No. <laughs> exactly. Right over you. Exactly. So that's why a lot of players kept getting run over and getting neck injuries. Mm -hmm. The favorite neck injury, what you and Sarah were talking about, yeah. they get injured. It feel like a, you get hit by a car. They yeah. really feel like, and then on top of that, most running back were taught high knee. If you were from the 80s to 90s, you were taught high knee. Especially when you come out of the hole. So if a guy come like that at a buck 25, he catches number knees. That's right. Like a Muay Thai, like a Muay Thai kick. Bop, 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 bop. He's done. Mm -hmm. You know, he got headache, head injuries, headaches. So why are you telling my players, never aim for center. Aim for the way the ball is at. That's take right. your hand and put it where the ball is and you take your shoulder. 
and play into a chest. Sure. When you do, when you do that, because see, Momo, if you do this, it'll alarm a lot easier to whip around the waist versus his chest. You can't wrap right. around the chest because look at me, you draw your broad shoulders. Look at me, you got broad shoulders. We're gonna do this to you. It's done deal. Right. You can't tackle us. But now we go low, we're out of waist and lift up. I already tell them to lift up because they can't run and now have a leverage. That's have right. no take, that, take that feet off the ground, they'll find out what happens quick. Exactly. Definitely exactly. all good. Definitely all good. Definitely exactly. all good. But that's what that's that's even most arts. What if I tell you do? Taylor got off his leverage. If he ever played base foot, take him off his base foot. The way you see most players like me and my what do they do? Take kick your base foot. Look at one guy with a person, he got beat because what he kept getting kicked in the base foot. He lost his balance. Now he can't do what he wants because now he's timid. He can't step on it. Exactly. And you defeat him like that. Now you get in his head mentally. That's that works out. Like, it's crazy from how that plays there. And the Olympics, when they did a lot of their testing. That's the first thing they said. When you go to tackle, you know, you know, you know tackle though. First thing they ask you, do you depend on your leverage leg? Huh? What do you mean by that? Do you depend on it? As in, do, that's your base. So do you throw it within? That's the only way you're going to kick, punch, everything else. If you do, we don't want you. They tell you, we don't want you. They want you balance. You got to be able to switch from south paw to north paw. South paw, mm-hmm. north paw. If you can't do that, because I mean, if you switch to north paw, they can't understand which is your base, so they can't know where to kick you. Right. You know? Now, if you stay on one base, which boxers do, why do you think boxers can't go to MMA because they're screwed? Because No, they only- can. It's, they can, but the problem is you have to switch. And that's the mm-hmm. biggest problem with boxers. You have to switch. Mm-hmm. You know, so when I train my students, I say I'm, I'm using boxing or kickboxing techniques, but you have to be good on your right and you have to be good on your left because – you don't have the ability to say, okay, you're going to attack me now. Attack me on my right side because that's my strong side. You don't exactly. have that. If it comes from the left, you got to go on that side too. You see what I'm saying? And it has to be just as dominant as your dominant side. So that's why I teach both, you know. But you can do it. It's just like you said, you just got to unlearn it. Like if you look at Carissa Shields, there were a lot yeah. of things I saw in her in her MMA match that bothered me because it was just like, these were the things that they should have taught her as far as defensively so she didn't get taken down. I knew she was a boxer, so I didn't want to see her grapple with a grappler. I exactly. wanted to see her to put her take down defense, pop back up, and throw those punches. I wanted to see her check those kicks she was throwing, and when her hand was open, light her up. You see what I mean? And move out exactly. the way. Those are some of the things that I wanted to see. Now, if she gotten taken down, I wanted to see her wrap up grab her weight, prop your foot, twist and turn, and do this. She was doing some rudimentary stuff. Maybe she was panicking. Maybe she had to slow down. But the stuff that she was doing, I was like, you know, she she for the months that she was training at Winkle John's camp, yeah. she shouldn't have done that. But in your mind, when you're panicking and somebody's throwing punches down, you kind of do the first thing that happens until you collect yourself, especially if you get caught. So exactly. it was interesting, you know, but it just takes time and it takes time and it takes time. Exactly. You know, you're talking from 30 years of football experience. I'm talking from 30 years of martial arts experience and football experience and, and everything else that happens with that. You know what I mean? So it's definitely exactly. an interesting thing. That's true. I'm putting another fighter too. Kimbo did a, Kimbo had the same problem also. Mm-hmm. Kimbo was a stand up striker. Now, ain't nobody, I don't care what nobody tell you, George, there's no man I know could take his punch straight up. There's nobody. I don't care who you are. You can't. No. You can't do a stand-up with the Kimbo. You would not go win that fight. So what they did was, like you said, they should have taught this man how to defend the ground game. And then on top of that, he got one thing that most don't have, that most, even, even MMA don't do. You watch him very carefully. If you take MMA take you down, they grab you closely. Your arms are free. Right. Pound the living hell out of them. You right. got, you're a striker. Do what you do best. You start hitting that liver. You ain't worried about them holding you. You ain't trying to grab you. He gonna try to protect that body. Yeah, you, you know, and if you go back to her fight, that's exactly what she did. When she and hit her from, from the bottom, she was like, mm-hmm. holy smokes. She can get hard. And what did she do? Mm-hmm. She, she leaned right into her so she couldn't hit her again. You know? But guess and what? That's... If you lean into it, guess what? You, if you lean into it, now guess what? She got two things out there now. You take power to hold you down. So even to do that, now you got legs. Now you got knees. Now you, I think the person did that very well. Anna Sova and um, 
Tatia, I mean, uh, what did I forget her name? Um, I forgot his blonde hair. You know what I mean? He perfected it. His ground game was a striking game. He went top, went to down. So you take him down. He punching you, kicking you, punching you, kicking you, like he's standing up. So, right. and so you don't want to take him down because you're scared. You don't want to keep him up because you don't know where to get hit. So he turned the whole thing around. And the thing is, there's no fighter ever replicated that style. And the reason why is because MMA only teaches you one thing. When you get on the ground, you try to get submissive. You try to get submission. You're trying to get the hold, the grab, the hand. But guess what? Who to say you? There was this. I know you enjoy the time too. Everybody's squinted different. There's people that are smaller that are very strong. Right? I've seen a guy pick a guy oh, yeah. in a home bar, pick him up literally, and drop him with one hand. And did it twice. So imagine if a guy can do that to you. Now, umbar right. is efficient. Now, umbar garbage. It's, it's useless now. You be not to grab by the leg. Okay. I see people stand up with you and drop you like this. That's a wrestling right. technique. And you hurt worse because if you do that, you helping me out. <laughs> you literally help me out because if you grab me here and grab me here, if I'm the person that don't mind, that love pain, that can fight through pain, you in trouble. Because I'm going to give you my body now to hurt you. You can oh, burst yeah. the whole thing. You know, and there's a lot of slick fighters out there. But I want to train real quick from fighting to basketball. Did you see what happened yeah. yesterday? Didn't oh, I say man. it? I said if Atlanta beats the Bucks, it's over. But the Bucks yeah. are fighting. And now they found this second little string that's coming in and it's powerful. I think it, I think the Bucks are gonna take it. I really do. Oh uh, honestly, truthfully, I think the Bucks will take it too. I, Joy, no, I don't agree normally do basketball, Joy. No, I gotta go to the office sometime. But this time I agree with you. If Trey Young don't come back. If he doesn't can't come back, it's done. Because the reason why I said it is, even though that he's not a factor, they say, but he's the nucleus of that team. He yes. pumps him up, he down. And he can facilitate stuff. He doesn't have to do everything that he needs to do, but he needs to come exactly. back to level team down. So they're going to exactly. go to Atlanta. If they go to Atlanta and win, it's going to go back to game seven in the Milwaukee. You know, But I it's just feel like, up. look, Middleton is having the game of his life. Yeah, um, but look at Portland. Drew oh, Holiday's cool. having yeah. Porter's he stepping up and doing his yep. thing. You know, all the people that are on that bench are stepping up and doing their thing. I mean, look at somebody like Brooke Lopez. I was angry at Brooke Lopez because I think he's the biggest thing on the court. And you exactly. getting dominated. And now Brooke Lopez woke up. Now he's getting 17, 20 points a game, at least in these last two games that he played. It's going to be a hard road to hold if you have that kind of talent going in and it just seems like right now Atlanta has these spurts where they're good slow down good slow down because it's not consistent so you know that's it's definitely going to be something that's why I say I agree with you George Milwaukee is going to be there and the thing is for the first time I think NBA history we might have a, a doggone good finals I mean yeah. a finals not no blowout like previously got no win by 30 no we might have a game because yeah. the Suns going to come all out Milwaukee coming all out so we gonna might see it as the game come down to the last shot. You want that Jordan shot and Blazy came back down seven points, came back and scored all seven. <laughs> they looking like, hold on, how you do that, man? How, how, man, how look, score, if, if, if the Bucks still get to the minutes. finals, you are gonna see Giannis say, "Wrap my knee up, give me a knee brace, exactly. it up, wrap it up." I gotta play at least in one finals game exactly. this second third with my brother. Well, okay. Wrap it up. Ain't, ain't no sad thing too. He don't have to do anything no more. His no. team is there. They have That's arrived. Right. He had to, they, he had to support they actually the needs. Has arrived. This is not the same Buck team that we played, that he played a couple years ago. Not the same Buck team before who went almost to the final and got blown out again. This is not the same Buck team. This is the actual team right now. They're playing as a team. They're not depending on one person anymore. Now they play together. And we can see how dangerous that bitch can be if they believe. That's right. So no I'm doubt saying, about it. We believe it's over. <laughs> well, listen, y'all, that was our show. We want to thank Tony for coming on the show and taking his time to talk to us. Y'all have a great 4th of July weekend. I'm heading back well, out. Definitely. i got to put the pool filter together. And Fred, you got to get a pool waiting for the hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff coming over. Oh, no, 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 brother. It's going to be raining over here. So everybody's just staying home and we can't go outside. What? You can afford it, George. <laughs> yeah, man. So definitely all good. But, hey, this is George. <laughs> hey, this is Fred. And that was real talk with George and Fraser. Y'all have a great 4th of July weekend. Yeah, 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 Be safe.